Everyone's pretty familiar with the way that benchmark uh, oil prices have fallen over the last three years. What's interesting is that when you uh, look at the forward curve, which is you know, kind of made up of folks who are uh, investing and betting on where prices will be in the future, um, it actually implies less than a 1% a year compounded growth rate in the price of oil up to 2025. And so um, one of the things that could be influencing that is that when you look at the way forecasts are built, I mean, all of the disruptive scenarios are basically in there at, at some probability, which tends to be pretty low. Um, but if you actually look at what happened three years ago to prices, from the, the increase in supply from the shale production, um, a tiny impact on either the supply or demand side could potentially have a huge price impact. And when you couple that with sort of the increased complexity in the global uh, market now and the number of stakeholders that are involved and considerations that weren't really there in the past, so whether it's you know stakeholder groups who now have opinions about where our energy sources should be coming from, um, investment from uh, folks like Tesla or Break through energy uh, into clean tech and different uh, different options, then the, the question that I think probably most oil and gas companies are, are left with is, is how do we um, protect ourselves and, and, and sort of hedge against some of these potential uh, disruptions? And, and what can we really tolerate um, from a price perspective and remain sustainable? Um, obviously, pretty much everybody right now is tolerating sub $50, but what happens if we go to sub 40 or even sub 30? Um, and so it, it, it immediately implies that we need some structural, sustainable cost reduction. And there's really only three ways you can reduce cost. You can reduce headcount, you can put more pressure on your suppliers, or you can rethink the way that processes are being executed and the way that the business is being run. Obviously, the first two, headcount reduction and supplier pressure, um, in the industry has been going through that and using those levers for the last three years. And there's also been a lot of process redesign, but a lot of it was sort of the low-hanging fruit. And so the only thing that's really remaining is, is some pretty serious process redesign that's based around technology uh, enablement. And that sort of then coupled with the technology advances we're seeing um, leads to this fairly uh, obvious path around digital oil and gas. And so when we look at that whole digital idea and say, what does that really mean? Well, all digital is really trying to capture is, is ways that you can augment or enhance um, the way you're executing and realizing strategy. And so that's done through two major uh, uh, paths. One is by setting a foundation with that technology, and the other is then starting to exploit more advanced technology. And so that foundation is made up of things like a digital core, providing a single source of truth for all the transactions of the organization, and a thoughtful and methodical approach to master data management and governance, um, along with you know the establishing a real-time analytics platform to then provide reporting and analytics across the whole enterprise. And by building that foundation and getting it in place, it helps you to start to uh, really leverage more advanced technology. So whether that's the industrial internet of things, um, machine learning, automation, or blockchain, um, those things will then allow you to start to drive real structural cost reduction. And the upside of that cost reduction is, is sure, it helps if, if prices go down further because it helps to create a margin buffer so that you continue to be sustainable. But the other thing that it does is that if prices stay the same or go up, you still win um, because margins have improved. Um, the other thing that's great about technology-enabled uh, change is that it scales. So as you start to acquire new uh, other firms or assets to grow your own business, it scales up with that so that those margin improvements uh, move with the size of the business.